for Amy and Rosling entering the gymnasium. Okay, this time we really mean it. The president is now crossing the street. You can hear some of the children outside yelling at him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States and the mayor of Shimoda. Kaijo no Minasama, I would like to say a few words in welcoming Mr. President. 125 years ago, several black ships visited this city of Shimoda. In those days, Japan was keeping herself away from the development of the civilization in the world and we did not have trade with other countries. Admiral Perry landed uh, here in Shimoda for the first time and uh, concluded the treaty with Washington. And today, here in the same city of Shimoda, uh, we have the honor of welcoming the 39th president of the United States of America, uh, President uh, Jimmy Carter, and it is a great honor uh, for the 32,000 uh, citizens of uh, Shimoda uh, to welcome Mr. President on the occasion of the Tokyo Summit meeting uh, to be held soon. On behalf of the citizens of the city of Sh Shimoda, I would like to express our hearty welcome to Mr. President. I sincerely hope uh, that this uh, town meeting uh, will further a mutual understanding and friendship between our two countries. And I hope uh, that the development of friendship between our countries will be forever. May I, in conclusion, uh, pray uh, for the development and prosperity of the United States forever and also uh, for good health of Mr. President. On behalf of the uh, citizens of Shimoda, uh, citizen of Shimoda, I would like to introduce um, uh, Mr. President. My name is Alki Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and distinguished citizens of Shimoda. My wife and I, and my daughter Amy, have been touched by the warmth of your welcome. I have already had the honor of an audience with your emperor, and I have had very productive meetings with your prime minister, Ohira, but I especially wanted to come to this historic city. Shimoda is where our friendship first took root and flowered. A century and a quarter ago, when our relationship began, Japan was a feudal society on the verge of social revolution. The United States was edging toward a war between the states over the issue of slavery. Neither of us has devised a perfect political system since then, but we share a fundamental belief in freedom and in democracy. As free people, we share common challenges as well. None is more important today 
than the energy crisis. Our planet is not producing enough oil to meet all our demands. The industrialized nations like the United States and Japan must face this challenge together. Rather than competing with one another for every available barrel of oil regardless of price, energy is the principal subject of the summit meeting your country is hosting this week for the leaders of the major industrialized nations. Together we must restrain and reduce our imports. Together we must reduce waste and conserve our precious energy supplies. Together we must find ways to explore and to develop alternate energy supplies and new technologies of solar power and synthetic fuels. This is a great opportunity as well as a challenge. Each of us must make painful adjustments in our society and some sacrifices in our daily lives. No one ever promised us that freedom would be easy or that democracy can be preserved without effort or without sacrifice. All nations can learn from the example of the Japanese people in grappling with the complex challenges of development and of change. You've built your nation into an economic superpower, but you preserve the grace and the humanity and the beauty of Japanese society. Your emperor made a wise statement to leaders in a poem he wrote in 1966. He said, would that the wise voice of the man in the street spoke daily to guide us in the performance of our duties. I have learned a great deal from the citizens of my country attending town meetings such as, such as this one. In the same way, I would like to learn from your own wisdom and your own experience. I will take your questions now with great pleasure. Sorry, I don't think I'm a good questioner. Carter Dai Toryo wa Yube Yakitoriya e ikareta so desu ne. Yakitori restaurant last night. Yakitoriya. Once a Yakitoriya, a Yakitori restaurant. I watched that. 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 At uh, the uh, well, we speak of the true intentions of Honshin. Uh, at the Yakitori uh, restaurant, that sort of place, I believe uh, you can always uh, get an impression of the true feelings of the people. What I would like to ask is the following Why uh, did you choose Shimoda for your town meeting? Uh, in uh, the annex, uh, well, the uh, friendship treaty between Japan and the United States was uh, first uh, concluded here in Shimota, and uh, there is the uh, Gyokusenji. In Chorakuji, uh, the uh, exchange of the instruments of ratification was conducted. But in Gyokusenji, the place you'll be visiting uh, today, uh, there you'll find five tombs of Americans, and I believe uh, uh, you can uh, get the true, uh, I uh, thought I can get your true uh, thoughts uh, here, so I would like to have your views on why you chose Shimoda for a town meeting. Thank you very much for this excellent question. I was here in Japan four years ago, before I was a famous man, and when I had an opportunity to meet many people in Japan in a free and friendly way. Last night, without notice to the Japanese security, we went to a private restaurant, the same restaurant that I visited four years ago. And there we found a friendship and warmth and exchange of ideas uh, so valuable to me 
as one of the leaders of a great country in the world. We wanted to have an opportunity to hear questions directly and to meet with other members of the Japanese uh, community outside of Tokyo. And the obvious place to me was Shimoda, where the good relationship between your country and ours first began more than 100 years ago. We felt that in Shimoda, there was a good historical base for interest in the United States. And that perhaps more than the average uh, Japanese community, you've studied about our own nation, and you would have uh, questions to ask, and you would not be uh, fearful to ask frank and uh, freely what questions actually concerned you. So because of a historical relationship, many years between us, and because we hope that you'll ask very frank and free questions, was the reason that I decided to come to Shimoda. The friendship between our countries is very important to me, and I look forward to having questions now from a group who are very interested in our country and who I think would be representative of interest to Japanese throughout your great country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, what sorts of games did you play when you were small? Uh, and uh, looking at the games children nowadays play in the United States, how would you compare the games? And what are your thoughts? When I was a child, I played baseball, which Japanese play extremely well, as uh, demonstrated by your great Mr. O, oh, whom I met the day before yesterday. I also uh, played uh, basketball. I lived on a farm. I liked to uh, fish and to uh, wander in the woods and streams. I think the Americans have still maintained this great interest in sports. Uh, this morning, uh, quite early, uh, my wife and Amy and I were in swimming about 6 o'clock, and we run every day to stay in good physical uh, condition. My own belief is that the modern-day American young person is a better athlete than they were when I was a child. The standard of uh, sports is higher, the competition is greater, and I think one of the new sports that has come to our country is uh, soccer or international football. This is a very popular uh, sport now in our country. It was hardly known when I was a child. I think one of the greatest things that people can do in Japan or the United States is to stay in good physical condition by participating in competitive sports. And I'm glad that even at the ancient age of uh, almost 55, I'm still able to participate uh, in athletics and sports. Thank you very, thank you very much. I'm a housewife and therefore don't really know much about difficult problems. So I would like to ask a question about house. household. I have three daughters. Uh, when they were small, my husband didn't look after them too well. And now that they have grown up, and the uh, one in the middle is 11 years old, the same as Amy, and uh, uh, these uh, daughters, after dinner, let's say, after supper, uh, they would add to a very uh, warm atmosphere at home. Uh, we have a very good rapport. And my husband uh, seems to be very happy being surrounded by three daughters all the time. I read in some article, uh, I understand uh, President Carter said that uh, one of the most important uh, uh, female women for you is Amy. Uh, um, I'm sure Amy will be getting married uh, some years from now. Uh, then. Uh, I wonder if you will feel you want to keep Amy uh, close to you, uh, will not want uh, her to go away to someone else. How would you feel? Good. You were much more fortunate than I 
much earlier. My first three children were boys, and my wife and I were married 21 years before Amy came along. She's very close to us, and we would like to keep her at home, of course. However, I think in a few more years, I hope at least seven or eight more years, uh, I hope that Amy will find a uh, good young man and get married and move away. We would obviously like for her to visit us often uh, after she does so. We have uh, a very close family. We now have three grandchildren, uh, two grandsons and a baby uh, granddaughter who was born uh, just a few months ago. So I think the closeness of families is very important in the lives of every person. One of the great things that uh, Americans admire about uh, Japanese is a very close-knit family and community relationships which you enjoy in spite of a very uh, great technological change that you've accommodated in your own lives. We have many things to learn from you, and I think that's one of the most admirable uh, characteristics that we admire about the Japanese uh, society, your strong families. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I might say, first of all, that your English is perfect. And I want to congratulate you already on doing such a superb job. You've obviously done your best in your study of our language. One of the things that you could do in the future is to be a professional interpreter at the United Nations. It's very important for young people of this age to learn about other people and learn about other nations on Earth. There is a genuine worldwide hunger, in my opinion, for friendship, for understanding, and for peace. One of the responsibilities of the leaders of nations, like my own and like yours, is to search for better degrees of understanding. Not much more than a week ago, I was in Vienna, Austria, meeting with President Brezhnev and other leaders of the Soviet Union to search for ways to control nuclear weapons and to have peace and friendship between the Soviet Union and the United States. Beginning tomorrow, I will be meeting with leaders from Japan, from Canada, Great Britain, from Germany, France, Italy, and from the European community, searching for ways for us to have better understanding. It's a mistake, however, for young people like you, or for average citizens like those who live in Shimoda, to leave this responsibility only to elected leaders. It's very important for you to study and to learn about others and to encourage your own leaders 
to explore not for war, but for peace, not for subjugation of citizens, but for freedom, and the very wonderful democracy that you enjoy gives us a chance to learn about others in an unrestricted way. A free press is also very important. I hope sometimes you can come to the United States to uh, visit us. If you come while I'm still president, we would love to have you come to the White House to see my family personally. <laughs> also, I would like to... Uh, If you will bring your books up here, I will be glad to sign them when I get through, okay? Uh, President Carter, uh, when you were a child, uh, what sort of uh, strongest reminiscence uh, do you have? What do you call the most about your childhood? I think the strongest memory I have is the closeness of my uh, family. I lived on a farm, and we uh, had a lifestyle much more similar to what it was 2,000 years ago than what it is today. We worked in the fields together, and we traveled very little. Uh, I always knew that my mother and father were near, and we were very closely bound together. We had very little contact with the outside world. Later, of course, with the modern technological age, with television, uh, telephones, uh, with travel, uh, by all people, the family structure became uh, much less uh, close together. And I would say that's the most vivid memory of my youth. Also, I uh, lived in the fields and on the farm, in the woods, along the streams. And when I'm now in the White House in Washington, my greatest hunger is to be alone, away from uh, security, away from the press, and uh, to be in the uh, fields and the woods again. Maybe after I'm no longer president, I'll have this chance but we want to keep a strong family in any circumstances. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, let me ask you a rather serious uh, question. With the slogan of uh, rectifying the United Society after Vietnam War and the Watergate uh, uh, you uh, came to uh, White House uh, as the first president from the South after the Civil War. What I was most interested was that you have uh, advocated human uh, rights on diplomatic front and also zero budget uh, for domestic uh, budget. Uh, you have also uh, sent letters to Sakharov uh, in the uh, Soviet Union, and you have also seriously worked for the agreement of Helsinki. At the same time, uh, you have, with unfailing uh, belief of uh, democracy, uh, been working vis-a-vis -vis Nicaragua and Zimbabwe, Rhodesia, and I would like to express my full uh, respect uh, to you. Now, uh, today we are faced with energy and other uh, important uh, problems. As uh, the leader of the uh, democratic world, on questions of uh, the less developed assistance to less developed countries and on questions of uh, Vietnamese refugees, I hope uh, you will play even greater role, and I wonder if I could have some of your views on these questions. The people of Japan and the people of the United States enjoy great privileges of uh, freedom and democracy, which others do not enjoy. My own belief is that we should take a bold stand in encouraging the basic human rights of freedom and liberty 
and proper attention to the worth of each individual human being, no matter how powerful or weak, no matter how rich or poor, no matter how influential or well-recognized they might be. I have uh, tried to let the United States be one of the uh, leading lights of the enhancement of human rights throughout the world. I have already met twice with uh, Prime Minister Ohira and other leaders of Japan to explore ways to alleviate the present intense problem of the tens of thousands of refugees who are coming out of Vietnam because of oppressive policies of the Vietnam uh, government. Of all the refugees who now leave uh, Asia, the United States receives about 70% of them. And we also provide very heavily uh, financial resources for the United Nations and for others who attempt to deal with this uh, increasing problem. Japan has been very generous in financial contributions, but because of the homogeneous nature of your own society, Japan has not yet decided to receive very many of the uh, Vietnam uh, refugees. With the other uh, Western democratic leaders, this will be the uh, number two item on the agenda. Along with energy, the most important thing we will discuss. I hope that the United Nations will very quickly arouse interest among all 150 nations on Earth to receive a large number or a small number of the uh, refugees, and that all of us might focus our criticism or influence on Vietnam to relieve this growing problem at its source. I think the uh, humane treatment of these refugees is a major responsibility for me as president. We have been taking about 7,000 per month. We have already received 220,000 of the refugees uh, from Vietnam and Southeast Asia. We are prepared to take even more. And uh, I will be joining in with Prime Minister O'Hara and others to make this a worldwide effort to alleviate this very serious human problem. Thank you for your very good question. Thank you very much, Mr. President. My name is uh, Masaki Yamata. I'm a ninth grader. When you were in junior high school, uh, I wonder if you've ever been scolded by your teacher and what sort of uh, memory do you have and what sort of dream did you have in those days? I have not only been scolded by my teacher, I have been severely uh, punished by my teacher with uh, a paddle which did not hurt me permanently. Perhaps one of the reasons that I ultimately became president was because my teachers were very strict and encouraged me to abide by the rules of the school and also inspired me to uh, study harder. I think the uh, primary goal that I had in mind when I was a ninth grader was to be a, a student at the United States Naval Academy and to be a naval officer. My own family has been in the United States for more than 300 years, and neither my father nor his father nor any of his ancestors had ever finished high school and gone to college. And I felt that because of the uh, government opportunity at the military school, the Naval Academy, that I would have a chance for the first time to uh, get a college education and also to serve in the U.S. Navy. I did finally go to the Naval Academy, uh, was in the Navy for 11 years, was a submarine officer, then resigned to go into public service eventually and uh, became president. So I think the ambition to get a better education uh, was uh, my major one as a ninth grader. I received uh, scolding and punishment when I was not a good young boy. I don't think the scolding and the punishment and the discipline hurt me at all. Thank you very much.
president in this city where Commodore Perry and uh, Harris who opened up the friendly relations between the two countries. You visited this town on account of that historical background. At the same time, in this city of Shimoda, at that time, those two distinguished American citizens, Perry and Harris, we learned what was happening in the world from these two distinguished Americans. And uh, as a result, we decided to open a country and conclude relationship of friendship with the United States, even daring the ban put on by the then Bakufu Shogunate. Do you know of this incident, historical incident? Yes, I've studied this uh, when I was a student. And in preparation for coming to Shimoda, I have uh, studied even more. So today, you are visiting Gyokusenji Temple at the entrance of that. Uh, we always think about the, those two distinguished American citizens, as well as Shoin Yoshida, who also made a great contribution to the opening of our country at that particular time. If circumstances permit, I hope you will slow down your car and pay respect to the great Shoin Yoshida. If you are kind enough to do that, uh, Dr. Yoshida and other distinguished ancestors of ours will feel very happy thinking about the even closer relations we enjoy with the Americans. I think they will enjoy beneath their graveyard. I sincerely hope that you do that and pay respect to those great ancestors as well. Thank you. The point you've made is very good. It would be a mistake for Americans to forget about the reception given to the American uh, officials, Perry and Harris, by the uh, people of Japan. We recognize how difficult this was 120 years or more ago. And I want to express my thanks on behalf of the American people for the friendship and hospitality and openness that was uh, offered to the world by Japan at that time under the most difficult circumstances. And you're absolutely right. It's not uh, equitable to honor uh, Perry and Harris and to forget about Mr. Yoshida and other Japanese leaders who made the great progress between our two nations uh, possible. Thank you for this reminder. It's very uh, well that you have done so. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. President. My uncle of my husband visited the U.S. when he was 17, and he still lives in Chicago. He is now 84. Three years ago, that particular uncle visited Japan, and at that time, he mentioned that the new president is Mr. Kata. And I was, I am very, very happy that I personally am able to see you, like we do now. At this moment, we have two children, one kindergarten pupil, the other going to primary school. In your household, President Kata, uh, what kind of uh, practices and hope do you express for educating and training your children, including Amy? Good. My children and Amy have always attended the public schools, both when I was uh, in Plains, Georgia, the little town where we grew up, uh, when I was uh, governor of Georgia, living in Atlanta, the capital city of that state, and now in Washington, D.C., uh, while I'm being uh, president. In addition to the regular classroom uh, opportunities, Amy goes to 
a class at the local university for specialized uh, training, and she also uh, studies uh, violin under the uh, great uh, leadership of a Japanese uh, master. We have uh, enjoyed yesterday, for instance, a, uh, a violin class that Amy attended with several other Japanese children. I think in addition to that, we provide Amy with an opportunity to travel. She's here with us uh, this morning, and she learns about other uh, countries and other people because of my own experiences. I might point out very quickly that uh, a father or a mother does not have to be president of the United States to provide young children with an opportunity to learn more about the world. She also learns, of course, from uh, television and from the reading which she does uh, every day. Most of the time when you see uh, Amy, except when she's very active, she'll have a book in her hand and reading on her own initiative. And I think this combination of schoolwork, family travel, in the home, reading, and uh, broadening one's uh, life through uh, violin or piano lessons uh, is all a very good combination for education. Thank you very much for letting me tell about my favorite daughter. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, one year from the year before last, uh, we received the student from the state of New York and had him stay in my house. So I feel very intimate with the Americans. A few days ago, well-known actor John Wayne passed away. According to what I've heard, he is one of the representative and great American. Uh, what he didn't like, according to the newspaper, was the color. People. You have well-developed democracy in your society. Uh, still, currently, many people, including the intelligent, educated people, may have some misunderstanding about the color of people, or in some region of your country, uh, even the overt form of segregation is practiced, as I was told. What do you think about such practice. If, Mr. President, if you are not married, suppose you are not married, and if you suppose fall in love with the colored girl, what would you do? Would you marry her without any resistance? <laughs> Thank you very much. There has been a time in our country when there was a great official and unofficial discrimination against uh, black people and others, other people of color. Even 25 years ago, this was uh, prevalent in the southern part of the United States where I live. This was uh, something inherited from the early years of our nation when slavery was part of our societal structure and was approved by the laws of our nation. It was very difficult for us to make this change, but it was one of the most wonderful changes that has taken place in our own uh, nation. And I hope that what we have accomplished in the United States in the last 25 years will be an inspiration to others where racial discrimination is still practiced. I can't say that this uh, attitude has been completely removed from the hearts of uh, our people, but we have made uh, great progress. As far as uh, intermarriages are concerned, uh, I've never uh, been in love with, with any other woman except my uh, wife, but I would hope that uh, in the true spirit of equality and in an absence of uh, racial prejudice, that I would not let the color of uh, a woman's skin uh, interfere with my love for her if I felt uh, that way. And marriage, of course, would be part of that, uh, of that relationship if the circumstances should permit. I hope my wife will forgive my answering the questions this way. It's a hypothetical question, Rosa, and I have no intention to leave you 
for another woman. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I like the U.S. more because of your answer. I might add that, that we still have our problems, and uh, we don't claim to be a perfect society. Uh, you have a very uh, homogeneous society in Japan with very little differences among uh, races. Our country is a nation of people who come from every country on earth. Our, ours is a nation of immigrants. Ours is a nation of uh, refugees. We have uh, hundreds and hundreds of different languages spoken in our country, but we are bound together uh, with a common purpose uh, under a democratic structure of government based on human freedom. And it makes it difficult for us in some ways, but I think it gives strength to our nation because this diversity of background and heritage and language and interest and history can be melded together in such a good way as it presently is in our nation. We're not perfect, but we're making progress. Thank you very much. I'm 78 years old. My name is Lee Chin Nagai. President, it is indeed a great honor beyond any expectation to have this opportunity of meeting you and exchange views with you. I will carry that to my posterior and I certainly welcome Mrs. Kata, as well as your daughter, it is a great honor for citizens of Shimoda to receive you. This will really tell us the great benefit of the free and democratic society. I would like to ask, Mr. President, as one, I'm talking about you, who were brought up in the farms, what do you produce in your farm at present time? My state produces uh, more peanuts than any other two states in the, a nation. And on my own farm, this is the uh, number one crop. We also produce uh, on our farms uh, cotton, corn, uh, swine, cattle, in the past, we've produced uh, poultry, uh, chickens, and we produce all kinds of feed grains, some oats, wheat, barley, uh, and rye. We have uh, pine forest. We produce uh, timber uh, on our land. It's a uh, fairly typical uh, farm for my own state of Georgia. We have about uh, 60 inches of rain each uh, year, almost two meters of uh, rain each year. We do some irrigating, and near my farm, but not on my farm, are produced uh, other crops like vegetables and uh, tobacco, but most of the crops produced on my farm are very large fields and uh, the crops that I have enumerated to you. I might point out that we are very proud of the uh, sale of American farm products to Japan. Uh, I forgot to mention that we also produce soybeans on our farm. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are more acres of land in the United States which produce food for Japanese than there is land in Japan which produces food for Japanese. So we are very proud of an opportunity to sell you our farm products. And it gives a, a great opportunity for uh, trade back and forth between our nations. Thank you very much for letting me talk about my favorite subject of farming. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Welcome, Mr. President, to the city of Shimoda. I'm the mother of a uh, first grader as well as a uh, young and a half girl. This is a very friendly atmosphere. I'm uh, really enjoying talking to you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask you, sir, for a young mother like me, who has a responsibility for the next generation, 
As a mother, you are a father, of course, Mr. President. But for a mother, what we should do, or what you expect us mothers to do for the next generation? That is my question, Mr. President. In a day of women's liberation, it's getting more difficult to uh, distinguish between the responsibilities of uh, women and men. My wife uh, gives me advice on matters of a broad range. She shares the responsibilities with me, uh, both for my business affairs and also political affairs. And so she and I have an equal partnership, which I think is uh, very typical of American life. My own uh, impression in being here in Shimoda and listening to the questions for uh, thus far is of the intense interest of uh, this community and Japanese people in general in the, the family and the growth of children and the cohesion of, uh, of the family uh, structure. I think to uh, provide support for a husband to share his burdens and responsibilities and achievements, to keep a, a stable family group, to uh, accommodate the varied interests and characteristics of uh, children, to give them a better life and a better opportunity than we ourselves had uh, when we were growing up, to try to acquaint them with the outside world and the principles of a good life. Those are things which are, are obvious to me as a father. I'm sure they're obvious to you as a mother. But uh, ultimately, a nation's strength rests very heavily on the strength of individual families and individual communities. That's a root of our of progress and the root of a stability of life which lets, lets us accommodate and overcome uh, serious problems and uh, obstacles. That's one of the reasons Japan has made such great progress. It's one of the reasons that you are one of the greatest nations on earth, the strong families. Thank you. It is indeed a great honor to be able to see you, Mr. President. I am with the farming family, 25 years old, producing mikan, the Japanese tangerine oranges. In Japan, at this moment, we have the import of agricultural products such as oranges, as a result of the liberalization of the agricultural products import, we tangerine producers are having hard time because of the import of oranges and other, other agricultural products from the U.S. So, in this connection, I'd like to have your thinking about this. And on top of that, if I get unemployed. Can I be employed in your farm in the U.S.? What would be the wages? Will that be enough to support myself, my wife, and my children? I will be happy to be employed by you with that wages, Mr. President. First of all, let me say that we are very careful in our export policies toward Japan to have a minimum disruption of the market for your own uh, products. We actually sell to Japan very little uh, citrus products, including oranges and tangerines, grapefruit, lemons. You have a total production of uh, three and a half million tons of uh, citrus products within Japan itself. The present uh, target, which has been negotiated between uh, Japan and the United States, says that by 1983, the American uh, citrus sales to Japan would be not much more than 2% of the total that you produce here in your own country. And we are trying to uh, focus the sale of American citrus uh, to Japan during the months when your own production is uh, least 
I believe, in June, July, and August. So we have to have some markets for our products in Japan in order to purchase the tremendous amount of projects, products that we buy from your uh, factories. But in negotiating these agreements, we try to keep the disruption of your products very minimally. I think the amount of citrus that is being sold or will be sold in Japan from the United States has been greatly exaggerated. お会いいたします。私はあの下田ライオンズクラブのチャーターメンバーでございますが、え、大統領閣下もえ、メンバーの一人と伺っておりますが、え、大統領に就任してからえ、クラブの例会等には出席されておりますが、その関わり合いとを
uh, either in politics or out of it, and no matter what your life might amount to at the end, it can still be a full and gratifying life. Thank you for letting me describe in a fumbling way my life as a child. It's been a long time ago. It's hard for me to remember all about it. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, President Carter, I'm sure you uh, respected your father. Uh, what sort of man was he? When you were a small uh, child, uh, what sort of thing did your father used to tell you? Until I was 13 years old, I was the only son in the family, and my father and I were very close. We worked in the same uh, field. We uh, hunted together, fished together, walked in the woods together, went on short trips uh, together. My father was uh, a very stern uh, father in that when he spoke, uh, I jumped. I didn't uh, disobey him. When I was uh, an unruly child or when I hurt my sisters or did something improper, my father would punish me for it. My father was uh, a hardworking man, very honest. He died in 1953. My mother, uh, who is 81 years old this year, is still living, and she was also a great influence in my, uh, in my family. My mother was a registered nurse, and my father was a farmer. But both my parents were very important factors in my life and uh, guided me, uh, I think, in a proper way. I might say that I, I won't have time to uh, take another question, I don't believe, but I would like to close by uh, making these comments. This has been an exciting experience for me. I feel a warmth of friendship and goodwill from you that's typical of the attitude of Japanese people toward Americans. And uh, it's very exciting for me as president of a great country to have that sense of our partnership and our common views toward the basic elements of human life. We occupy positions of leadership in the world and we have a great responsibility on us. Not only presidents, but fathers and mothers, those who grow uh, tangerines, those who go to school, to learn about how we can be a uh, credit to our country in our own individual lives and our own individual achievements. Although many things change in a modern world with jet airplanes and television, uh, the most important things do not change. Love in a family, honesty, friendship among people, a desire for peace, a respect for one another, the beauty of nature, the reaching for a better life for children than parents had, those kinds of things never change. And I'm very glad to be part of Shimoda today and to have your questions covering such a wide range of interest. I hope that through television, the people of Japan will see that what started here 125 years ago as a first little tiny uh, seed of friendship between our two countries has now grown into an enormous tree of uh, very wonderful friendship that can be an inspiration to our own people and an inspiration to peace-loving and freedom-loving people around the world. I'm very proud and thankful to be with you, and I thank you for a chance to let me hear from you and to let you hear my voice as a leader of a great nation visiting the people of another great nation.